Hello everyone, this is June 2nd and 3rd from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. This episode we watch as the lava continues its path towards the coastal community of Kapoho. Let's get into it. We start off the morning of June 2nd with a thermal map from the USGS. This map shows the lava flows from Fisher 8 running to the north-northeast, roughly six miles downslope, to where it's reached within only a couple dozen yards of the Four Corners area, the intersection of Highway 132 and Red Road, also known as Highway 137. By the time Mick Calber does his morning overflight of the flow fields, we see that the leading edge of the lava flow is just a stone's throw from the intersection of Four Corners. The flow is pretty slow over the past 24 hours, but it's this slow march towards the coastal community of Kapoho that we see here. Kapoho itself is comprised of three different little sub-communities, the Kapoho beach lots, the Kapoho farm lots, and vacation land. Combined together, there's roughly 350 homes, maybe a little bit more. If you look just to the right of the clouds in this shot here, you'll see one of the last images of Green Lake the naturally occurring body of water inside the Kapoho Crater and was one of the only two lakes on the island of Hawaii. At approximately 10 a.m., we start to see this large billow of steam coming from near the leading edge of the flow front. And it's just a humongous amount of steam. Basically anybody that was familiar with the area, saw this steam, knew what it meant. It meant that lava had reached the Green Lake. Lava had gone around the Kapoho Crater found a depression, and from there started to fall with a little lava fall into the lake itself. The steam plume coming from Green Lake would last roughly three hours before it ceased. And by then, the lava had basically evaporated all the water from within the lake. This was rough to see for many people, including myself. I grew up going down to Green Lake commonly, and to see it go out like this was rough. At approximately the same time that lava began going into the Kapoho Crater, it crossed four corners, cutting off access along Highway 137 into Kapoho, which was the last way into the coastal community. There are still people inside of Kapoho, people that decide to stay behind, and they are now essentially trapped. There's still ways out, but they aren't easy, and they require assistance. One person who stays behind is Travis Sanders, who is documenting the situation on the ground where we have this large AA uh -uh front working its way slowly but methodically through the subdivision, through the farm lots first, making its way to the coastline. By this point, with the lava flow entering the Kapoho farm lots, much of the hope that maybe Fisher 8 resets or stops its eruption entirely are starting to fall away. Fisher 8 has been going unabated throughout the night and has no signs of slowing down throughout the day. It is just a large amount of lava coming out of this one centralized vent, moving along this channelized lava flow that's become more and more streamlined as the tips, the fingers running to the north, have started to solidify. With each step up in eruptive activity indicated by the phases of the eruption, we step up in the amount of SO2 being emitted from the eruptive vents as well. We now are in the hundreds of thousands to 200,000 tons per day SO2 emissions. We also see here these lava boulders which have anchored themselves in the upper part of the channel. These would last throughout the eruption and continue to develop into more prominent features. This clip here has not had any speed adjustments made to it. You can see just how fast the lava flow is moving throughout the lava channel in the upper section. Now overflows of the channel walls are still pretty common. This is when the lava level inside the lava channel is higher than the channel walls themselves. So lava goes over the top and solidifies and builds up those channel walls just a little bit higher in the area in which it overflowed. And this process is repeating and continuing each hour, each day, and making that channel just a little bit more robust. One of the bigger fears is what happens if there is a breakout. A breakout is not a channel building event, but when the channel is compromised and lava flows out of it into an area that it wasn't originally going and maybe even diverts the flow in that direction. But at this point in the eruption, 
that is more of a concern than it is a reality. At this point, there's a whole bunch going on, but the county has a few other things that they're working on on the side. The first is the import of these concrete barriers that are gonna be used to create barricades around specific areas of the eruption site. These will last through the duration of the eruption. The second of which is the creation of alternative access routes for Calapana and Seaview, which have been threatened by ground cracks as well as the lava taking the Highway 137 near Pooiki. The alternative access routes have to be bulldozed over previous lava flows inside the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. As night came on June 2nd, I want to be able to say that all eyes were on Kapoho, but really they weren't. The lack of access into the area severely limited the amount of footage coming out that night. Scott Wilson here provides one of the final overflights that evening, giving some aerial imagery. Travis Sanders is still inside the subdivision and is documenting the progression as the AA makes its way to the ocean, but otherwise there isn't much coming out and we're gonna have to wait till morning to see what remains of Kapoho. We start off June 3rd by looking at a thermal map provided by USGS, which shows the advancement of a flow front from four corners the previous day, now most of the way through the farm lots of Kapoho. The flow front has gotten exceedingly wide it went from a couple hundred yards across to now being almost a half mile across. And it's still working its way to the ocean. In this small clip, we see that lava is still pouring into the Kapoho Crater, the area that was once occupied by Green Lake. On the morning of June 3rd, when the footage finally started to come in, I was surprised that the lava flow hadn't made it closer to the ocean or even made ocean entry overnight. The flank expansion, this giant wide lava flow that was getting wider over the previous day really sucked up the majority of the lava and slowed the progression of the flow front. This was a slow moving disaster. Now you hear about how people's perception of time will slow down when something like a car accident or a train crash happens in order to perceive what's going on, but that phenomenon is intensified in this type of disaster where it itself is in slow motion and it feels like it's even in slower motion so these couple days felt like they lasted weeks by late afternoon on june 3rd the lava flow had maybe only made it a hundred yards closer to the ocean than it was that morning it's a very flat area through here and the lava is still pooling out it's expanding the flanks and that's slowing the progression down significantly. But it's relentless. It's a force that cannot be stopped and is hard to comprehend unless you've seen it firsthand. Meanwhile, back up slope at Fisher 8, not much has changed. The eruptive rate coming from the vent is holding at a very high output, beating the channelized flow, making its way to Kapoho. This footage here gives a good illustration of how the cone of Fisher 8 was formed. You see spatter coming up and landing on the backside of what is the developing cone. And each time spatter lands there, it builds up the cone just that little bit higher. The spatter cone is going to continue to develop until it gets high enough until lava cannot come over the top and continue building it up any further. We end May 3rd with a shout out to all the volunteers that really came together to help in the 2018 eruption from meal preparation to donations to helping people evacuate. It was truly a community effort and it was an amazing thing to be a part of. That'll do it for June 2nd and June 3rd from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. In this episode, we saw as the lava continued its march towards the Bay of Kapoho, entering the farm lots and taking Green Lake with it. In the next one, ocean entry is made. Until then, aloha.